For this presentation, we're going to look at revaluation for property, plant, and equipment, and the difference between GAAP and the international standard. Now, under IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment requires entities to choose between two methods, the cost method or the revaluation model, to determine the carrying amount of property, plant, and equipment subsequent to acquisition. Now, what does that mean? Well, the cost model requires PP&E be carried at its cost less accumulated depreciation and any accumulated impairment losses. This is what we use under GAAP, and it is the method that we use in the United States. Now, the revaluation model, IFRS, requires PP&E be carried at its revalued amount which is its fair value at the date of the revaluation, less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment losses. Revaluations must be made with sufficient regularity to ensure that the carrying amount is not materially different from the fair value. If an item of PP&E is revalued, the entire class of assets to which that asset belongs must be revalued. The amount by which assets are revalued is recorded as a revaluation surplus, which is a component of accumulated other comprehensive income. Now, I just want you to know that very few companies use it in the United States, although it is permitted under GAAP. Now we're going to look at an example. Right. In our example, my corporation buys a piece of equipment on January 1st, 2017. He pays $130,000 for it, and it has an expected life of six years and an estimated salvage value of $10,000. The company uses straight-line depreciation, and on January 1st, 2018, the equipment was appraised at $125,000 with a remaining five-year life and still a $10,000 salvage value. Mike needs to prepare financials under the international standard using the revaluation model required under IAS 16. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the journal entries as they would be made under GAAP versus under the international standard for 2017 and 2018. And then we're going to show what the entries would be on the conversion worksheet to get us from GAAP to the international standard for both 2017 and 2018. Now for 2017, the entries would be the same. We, for GAAP, we would put depreciation expense of 20,000 and we'd get that by taking the cost of $130,000 minus the salvage value divided by the six year life. And it would be exactly the same under the international standard. It will change in 2018. GAP will remain the same because the remaining life and salvage value did not change under the revaluation. However, uh, since we're using revaluation method for the international standard, there would be an adjustment on January 1st and then journal entry for the new amount for depreciation. So this would be the calculations that we would make under the international standard. First, on January 1st, 2018, we would reverse the accumulated depreciation from the previous year. We would adjust the equipment account to the fair value, which would be 125 versus 130. So we'd have to take 5,000 off the books. And then the difference between the 20 and the five would go to accumulated other comprehensive income as revaluation surplus. We would also have to determine the new depreciation expense based on fair value in remaining years, which equals 23,000. So here are our journal entries. Under GAAP, nothing would change. We would book at year end the $20,000 depreciation and the offset would be accumulated depreciation. Under the international standard, what we would have to do is 
First, reverse out the prior year depreci uh, accumulated depreciation. We would have to adjust the equipment account by 5,000, and then the difference would go to our revaluation surplus. That would be done on January 1, and then at the end of the year, we would debit depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation for 23,000. Get a little adjustment there so you can see, get a better view of what that looks like. Now, what's going to happen on our working papers when we're converting from GAAP to the international standard? There would be no entry for 2017 because the depreciation was the same for both, but for 2018, conversion worksheets for GAAP to IRFS. First of all, accumulated depreciation would be overstated. It should have been, it would be 40,000, but it should only be 23,000. So we're going to have a net adjustment of 17,000. And that is corrected by taking out the 20,000 for the previous year and adjusting for the additional uh, depreciation for 3,000. We have to adjust the equipment and we have to uh, show the revaluation surplus. So this is what the journal entries would look like on the working page. Again, we would have reduced accumulated depreciation by 20. Equipment would be reduced by 5, and we'd book, re book our revaluation surplus because we're going to the international standard. And then we would adjust depreciation expense for 3,000. Now, here is a summary for depreciation expense. There would be no adjustment in 2017, but there would be an additional 3,000 under the international standard under 2018. Now, for the balance sheet accounts, the net book value would be exactly the same. If we look at this, it would be exactly the same at the end of 2017. But in 2018, we'd have to do our revaluation to change the net book value. And in this case now, under the international standard, it reflects the fair, mark, fair value. Then we would book the new depreciation for 2018, and now we would have different net book values. And that is the end of this presentation on what happens when you have a revaluation and the difference between the two methods.